Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And today it is mid-August on the west side of Michigan. So it's time to plant our fall food plots. We're gonna do that no-till style. I'll also show real quick how the, the uh, spring planting turned out. And uh, I'll also wait and publish this video a little bit later and show it maybe a week or two after we drill this stuff in and uh, what it looks like. As a refresher, we're getting ready to calibrate the drill. As a refresher, what we're doing here is we've got our scale right here, just a little kitchen scale, pretty accurate down to the ounce. Um, just a bag to put underneath the tube right here. So you can see right here, I took off the tube. I'm sticking the bag underneath this right here. And now I'm gonna go and spin the wheel 20 times, cause that's how my calculations are, 20 times. And then I'm gonna weigh it. And I need about 1.17 ounces for 20 revolutions to get 70 pounds per acre of the fall release. So I'm gonna do that here a second. All right, so we are out here in the West Sahara plot, which is the one that I have shown a few different times with all the mare's tail. See all that stuff? I mean, that is just, I've half planted this, but it's just a sea of mare's tail from down here horizontally. But, uh, you know, if you go down in there and get up in there a little bit further, it's not quite as thick as you think it is. There's a lot of open ground. So, you know, I have drilled about half of it in. I'm just going around the outside of it. And, you know, I'm sitting here looking down. There's two things. Well, maybe three things I'd like to go over. <clears throat> Number one is... The mare's tail looked like it is sitting down pretty good. Is it all going to pop back up? I don't know. It's been five minutes, and it all seems like it's down, sitting on the ground pretty good. But tomorrow morning, I might come out here, and it's all back up. Number two, the uh, crop that was the spring release, or I guess it's summer release that's in here from green cover seed, um, I'd say the biggest plant that is in there is grain sorghum sorghum grass sorghum sudan grass something like that anyways it kind of looks like corn and then it's got the seeds up on the top um there's a some of that in here and what i'm hoping is that that pops back up and it looks like maybe it's going to so all the stuff that is in here the soybeans um the radishes the sorghum, I hope that that stuff all lives through drilling, you know, dr drilling through it right now. Um, and then number three is uh, how the drill is going. And the drill looks like it's going really well. I mean, you can see, I have made it a little more shallow than normal. Um, this year, the last couple of years, I've been drilling it in probably an inch and a half. And I just got done adjusting it to about a three quarters of an inch. So it's a half to three quarters of an inch. And depending on the undulations of the ground, it'll be more or less. But that's kind of generally where it is, around three quarters of an inch. And uh, I hope that that helps uh, some of the smaller stuff germinate better. But um, because the ground isn't super thatched, is that a word, thatched? There's not a lot of thatch on the ground in here. There's still some open ground in here, which is probably why there's so many weeds. But um, it is drilling. I mean, the, the, the discs are cutting right through it. It's drilling in really well. I'm really happy with how it looks. So I'm just gonna hop on and keep going here. Um, we are supposed to get a fair amount of rain this weekend. Today is Thursday. So in two days, we're supposed to get a good amount of rain. And that, and last weekend we got three inches of rain. So moisture should not be a problem. Germination should not be a problem. Um, getting it drilled down in there is not really a problem because everything is, has some moisture in it, so it's not real brittle. The old stuff that's on there is not real brittle. So we're getting through there. So things are looking good. We're just gonna keep going through here. And again, we're just gonna keep experimenting. I'm being stubborn, probably stupidly stubborn as usual. And uh, I'm not doing anything to address the weeds that are in here right now. I'm just drilling in and we're gonna see how it goes. I have noticed in this plot, there's not just mare's tail in here, um, but there's also some thistle in here. And if you know anything about thistle, uh, they're, it's very pricky and it can be very aggressive. And so I might need to burn everything down next spring to make sure I get rid of all that thistle too. So, but uh, this mare's tail I think is 
Roundup resistant from what I can kind of tell looking online. And if you just look in this field and you look in a lot of the farm fields around our place too, it seems like the only thing you see is mare's tail. So I think it's glyphosate resistant, um, which makes it difficult. So we need to use 2,4-D, I think is what some of my buddies are saying to uh, spray that down. But then you got to let that sit on the surface of the ground for two or three weeks before you plant. So next year will be an interesting experiment. We'll see what we do just to try to get rid of this mare's tail. Maybe it's more like, maybe we should call it nightmare's tail. <laughs> it's more like a nightmare trying to get rid of this stuff. There you go, Night, nightmare. That's what we're gonna call it from now, a nightmare's tail. But anyways, I digress. So I am out in the plot behind the house now, the backyard. And this is another spot where the mare's tail, the nightmare's tail is not very bad. And I look down in here and there's, it's pretty thick with clover. It's got grass in there too, but it is thick with clover. So. I'm going to say that the mare's tail loves just a little bit of open ground. That's, that's what they need. If you've got clover or any kind of ground cover that's on there all the time, I think it minimizes the mare's tail. So I'm, I did not do clover this year. I kind of mentioned it in the last video that I was thinking about putting clover in just kind of be a living mulch. Um, I chose not to do that, but, um, I may research that this winter and do that next year. But I kind of like what happens with the clover. Keeps the weeds down and feeds the deer all the time. And the other stuff still grows in it. Look at this stupid woodchuck. Thinks he's hiding on me. I just came out here to do an update. <laughs> of course I didn't bring a gun with me to get rid of him. Oh well. This is day number two since we have planted and drilled everything in. So your first observation is you can see that a lot of the uh, nightmare's tail, as I call it, has stayed down. I mean, it, it went down and it's staying down. So I don't know if it's killed, but it's not like it's popping back up to do a great amount of reseeding. But I guess maybe over there a little bit has popped up. But just in general, it's way, way down. I got to believe 90% of it has stayed laying down on the ground. But the... Um, the sorghum Sudan grass and the other stuff that was planted in here, it seems to be popping up okay. It seems like there's a higher percentage of that popping back up and, uh, you know, it's hopefully going to finish seeding out and growing. Um, nothing has germinated yet. If we get down here into the, uh, the planting line, you know, if you look along that one there, there's nothing up there yet. Here's another one right here. Yeah, and you can see the seed right here actually is that a looks like a yeah there's a pea right there too so but nothing has uh, germinated yet and I wouldn't expect anything to germinate yet it's only been a day and a half really technically so um, but I just wanted you to see like how things have reacted since we went over it and drilled it in it uh, a little bit has popped back up and now if you can just kind of walk through here and look I mean the stuff that we planted in the spring you know here's here's soybeans more soybeans. Again, I don't remember what this thing right here is. Um, you know, and obviously here's some sorghum Sudan grass that's getting ready to seed out. And so I'll just kind of look you, let you look around from more like a ground level here. But, uh, you know, right over here is some radish. But, you know, all those buggers are eating it off. It hasn't even had a chance to finish maturing and they're already eating it off. So, so the stuff in here that we planted in the spring is still living. And uh, the fall stuff is going to start germinating, taking over here the next few weeks. Just want to point out here that, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to see where the stuff is growing that you drilled in. But this happens to be a spot where you can see it pretty well. Um, but it, uh, it is, it, I mean, it's growing in rows over here too. But I just happened to come on that. You can see, see the drill right there, the row there, row there, there, there. So, I mean, this is what is happening even over in these really messy looking areas you can't see it as well but this one showed up really good on the video so i thought that i would dial in on this a second so when you come down in here let's just kind of pick one you know here's a pea pea right here some kind of probably rye oats maybe there's a buckwheat and you can see you know the rows right here and look at this these goofy buggers are eating this stuff already i don't know if you can see that but already eaten it off so yeah so there it's easy to see the rows in there um 
So, I mean, there's a lot going on down in there. The drill is actually planting through all the crap. And it's happening over here too, and I'm afraid to try to show you over here, but, because it just, if, in the camera, I think it just shows up as grass, but you see this buckwheat right here? There's a row going right there. And there's another row going right here. There's one right here. Um, you know, even though it looks messy over here. I guess that's, isn't that one of the things with this no-till thing? Like, I just like things to be clean. I liked it back when we used to rototill and uh, drag and broadcast and cultipack it. It all looked so clean. And then with it, back when you, in clover plots, you used to mow clover plots. They kind of say you don't need to mow them anymore. But <laughs> see, look how it's just messy. But I guess maybe that's just the OCD in me. Do you have any OCD? <laughs> kind of just makes you want to have stuff look really clean. Okay, so we're coming up into our uh, Sahara plots here. We're walking into the West Sahara. And I'm not sure if you can pick this up on the audio here, but this um, this whole oak grove right here is sounds like you're dropping acorns, or there's a squirrel up in there dropping them down. But anyway, so you can see the west plot right here, right next to uh, it's about an acre, acre and a half of oaks, drop a lot of acorns. But uh, we take a look around in here again. Just look, it's so messy. But this one was the worst plot for nightmares tail. I mean, it was just solid. And uh, you can see a bunch of it did pop back up, but not nearly as much. And if we look down, you know, you can see that it's still laying there um, all over through there. So it kind of knocked it down, which is good. It's letting light down in here. And if we get down in here, again, we can see where the drill worked. You know, right here, grass, uh, I believe buckwheat, there's a radish, you know, if you just keep going, there's a pea right there. So, you know, here's another pea and another whole row. So the drill, yeah, and I can see, I can see drill lines all over through here. I don't know if you can see this here. I mean, just look, you see peas and buckwheat, oats, radish, all that stuff is all in there. So. Things are looking pretty good, I would say. I kind of like how it looks. I'm gonna wander over here and just keep this rolling a second because maybe we can get a better look at it. Over here, yesterday, I just came out and mowed the shooting lanes and you can probably get a better look down in here. Well, it kind of took away the, I mean, I guess you can see, here's where the drill went right here right here so it all drilled through really well here's our north blind right here it all drilled through really well i like it so so that, i guess that's kind of the conclusion is things have, have germinated very well from drilling in through all the standing stuff from the summer crop and i'm very encouraged that you know as the season moves on here it's going to be really really good all right, today is the last day I'm letting myself out on the property. It's September 3rd, I think, Saturday, the Saturday before Labor Day. And uh, it's time to be done. No more on the property. Cold, hard stop. So this is it, my last uh, visit out here. So I'll, that's why I kind of gave you an update on the food plots, how things looked. I do have a food plot close to the house that I, I'll sneak onto that to maybe give you an update once in a while on how things are going. But, um, you know, my conclusion was the summer crop worked really well. It grew had a boatload of weeds in it, especially Nightmare's Tail. We just let it go. And we just two weeks ago drilled the fall release, the fall um, seed mix into it. And I just showed you how it's germinating. It looks pretty good. I'm encouraged. I think that by the time mid-October, November roll around, all this stuff is gonna be producing food that will bring deer out in here quite a bit. So I like it. I think that all these uh, weeds are, uh, the nightmare's tail has been knocked down pretty well. And I'm, I'm good, happy with that. The only thing I wish that was more prominent in these plots is I mentioned before that I wanted more structure. I wanted there to be, and you can see where I mowed right here, the line all the way back there. I wanted this side to be taller. 
and thicker and and then go ahead and mow and put a bunch of food in there so that didn't work out and that part i am disappointed about i mean so next year i don't know what i'm going to do next year i'm going to i'm going to think about it over the fall we're going to wait and see uh, how successful these plots are for deer coming out into them and you should probably do the same thing like don't make it a judgment yet on what you're going to do next year wait and see how this year ends up turning out and then uh during the winter Maybe we'll uh, roll the video a couple times and just kind of think through all this thing together, like how we're going to do this. So, um, so I am literally up in the West Sahara plot. Uh, as soon as I stop recording this, I'm going to turn around, walk out, and I'm done on the property. That's it. It's over. I put the cameras out. You can see I got a camera right back here, right there. Put the cameras out yesterday and uh, starting to get pics. If the batteries run out before hunting season, I'm not coming out here. I'm just going to let them die, and I'm not going to get picks. That's how important I feel it is to stay off of your property, especially, you know, a small property. This is only 40 acres, and uh, there's a lot of pressure all around here. Man, I want the deer to be comfortable here so that when we hunt that perimeter, you know, they're going to be coming by, moving around in the daylight, and uh, that's how we've been successful the last couple of years. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope your food plots are doing really, really well. If you have anything that you can teach anybody or share with anybody, I hope that you'll put it in the comments below. I really would like to encourage all you guys, think about starting your own channel. You know, it, all you gotta do, all I do is I grab my iPhone and I turn it on and I start going and just talking. And if you guys have things that you feel people need to know or experiments you've done or anything you can do to help or encourage another hunter, I would say do it. So don't be afraid to grab your cell phone turn it around and just start talking that's all i did and then um you know putting setting up a youtube channel is really pretty simple just google setting up a youtube channel and it shows you how to do it you can have all this done and, and rolling in 10 or 15 minutes it's really it's not that complicated so all right uh, if you have any questions give me a comment below i'll answer it before work thanks for watching